All right, so on this channel, we cover my local CHL team, the Halifax Mooseheads. There's an entire playlist you guys can watch. Some of the videos are vlog style, which you guys have really appreciated. Others, others are more about the team, and today is sort of a catch-up and a video that I've been avoiding making. The Mooseheads, unfortunately, did not have the season they anticipated. You know, they came so close to the Memorial Cup, just losing in the QMJHL Finals last year. And this year, things looked great. I mean, they started off by enshrining Nathan McKinnon's number in the rafters, and they did finish the top of their division in the regular season with 42 wins and 92 points in 68 games. After losing the Gilles Courteau Trophy at home last year, the pressure was on, however... And, well, it all blew up in their face. A big part of this was Jordan Dumay. He had a poor showing in the World Juniors. He came back, then picked up a hip injury. And at the end of his recovery before playoffs, he also picked up a DUI at 2.20 in the morning, cruising down Brunswick Street. He was arrested and suspended by the Mooseheads for not just the rest of the season, but the first game of the playoffs. The Mooseheads wrote a detailed response as they obviously don't agree with his conduct. And of course, when Dumay was serving his suspension, he retweaked his injury from January and didn't end up coming back at all. Just a terrible end to his career as a Moosehead. And what you have to realize is that this guy was the face of the franchise. He was literally the leading scorer in team history. Just Pathetic. Good luck in Columbus, bud. And without their best player, though Catafort had a great season himself, literally the Q's MVP, the Mooseheads got surprised and were dog walked in round one, swept by the Acadie Bathers T10 for nothing. They didn't even give Brandon and I time to see a game. They were there, then they were gone. And just like that, Jordan Dumay and really this entire era of the Mooseheads comes to a close. Dumay will likely see AHL time next year if he makes Columbus. And besides for other players aging out, the Mooseheads were wheeling and dealing before and at the draft to blow the team up and start the rebuild, which is something you see all the time in the CHL. Players have only a few years, so your core expires extremely quickly. You sell every asset you have and try to rush a rebuild. That also means teams can go from very good to very bad, as we saw with the Quebec Rampart. So as for dealing key pieces, the Mooseheads, funny enough, made two trades to Moncton in the same day. First, they sent Dylan McKinnon to the Wildcats for Moncton's 2026 first, second, and third round picks. Later, they acquired Sean Carrier for one of my favorite Mooseheads, Marcus Vitacek, in this year's third round pick and Victoriaville's third next year. So basically, a good 20-year-old from Halifax with only one year of eligibility left for a 17-year-old who's underperformed but who Halifax will now try to rework with the extra minutes he'll be able to get. Then the big trade of the day, Halifax sent the Q's MVP, Matthew Catafort, to the Ramuski Oceanic for a boatload of picks. For Catafort, the Mooseheads got a first, second, and third in this year's draft, picks 11, 34, and 48th overall, and also got a first and second round pick in 2026. Five picks for likely one year of Catafort is solid. Ramuski is hosting the Mem Cup this year, so it makes sense that they want to beef up for a solid year and go on the run. Remember, if you're hosting, you get an automatic fourth spot in the Memorial Cup. And as a Mooseheads fan, I'll just sit back and say thanks for the picks. We're going to need them. And with that first round pick acquired, the Mooseheads selected a local boy, Daniel Walters, 11th overall in the Q draft. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I know anything about these guys. They just started high school. I think it'd be weirder if I did. Walters is already six feet tall and a buck 80, so a solid unit of a kid for someone who just turned 16 in March. He projects to be a solid two-way center, I guess, but we'll see how she goes. Fun to have a local guy to watch and cheer for next season. They then grabbed Kalen Blake, who's a newfie from Cornerbrook, who was playing hockey at Rhode Island. God bless elite prospects and shout out one time to Cornerbrook as well. He's another 6-foot, 170-pound, 16-year-old winger, and that was the theme of the Mooseheads draft. They drafted nine forwards looking to reinvent their team and system, and they've got open spots for these guys to battle for. They also brought in Carlos Handel from Germany in the import draft. He's a right-handed defenseman who's 17-year-old right now playing U-20 internationally. He's a more polished prospect than the kids just drafted, as he's NHL draft eligible this year. But that just means he's going to hopefully come in with a bang and make a difference on the blue line 
right away. Sort of to end this video off, I do just want to mention Mathis Rousseau. He was the stud goaltender for the Halifax Mooseheads as they were competing. But I mean, the Mooseheads, they're in limbo for a couple of years as they build a new identity. So we'll see how that goes in 2026. I know two years, that's forever for junior hockey. They'll have more picks to make a move or rinse and repeat at the draft this year if the crop doesn't work out. And there are still a few valuable players here. Mathis Rousseau has got to be the big one. He's been the stud goaltender for the Mooseheads, one of the best, if not the best, in the CHL. It'll be his 20-year season. He also just recently tried out with the Nashville Predators after going undrafted. I actually expected them to have tried to move him before the draft. They didn't. It gets tougher moving a 20-year-old player, especially a goalie closer to the trade deadline. We'll see how that goes. Either way, certainly a couple tighter years for the Mooseheads. But listen, you crush a few beers before the game. You crush maybe one or two there. And you have a good time. It's guaranteed. So Brand and I will get out there, get some more content for you. Just maybe don't expect the same team performance. That's all I've got for you guys. Until next time, be safe. Have a good one. May the force be with you.